The Echo Custom Series, or CS Switches, are Echo's newest entry into the custom keyboard market, and have begun to gain some popularity due to the ridiculously low price and surprising quality, something that Echo Switches haven't really been known for in the past. I picked up the Echo CS Ocean Blue Switches in order to try experience a real tactile switch, as I recently tried the Gadron Brown tactile switches and was disappointed at the non existent light tactile bump. So let's take a look at the Echo CS Ocean Blue switches and see what they have to offer. At a staggering MSRP of $10 for a pack of these switches, they come in packs of 45, which is a bit of an odd choice admittedly and seems even weirder than the glorious panda switches, which comes in packs of 36, meaning that you would need 3 packs for the exact amount needed for a full size keyboard being 108 switches. But with the Echoes, you need 3 packs for a full size, but you end up with almost 30 extra switches. Because of the low price, I'm willing to overlook it. These switches are manufactured by KTT, but sold under the Echo brand. Echo currently offers 3 types of their CS switches. The Rose Red switches, which are a light linear. The Matcha Green switches, which is a slightly heavier linear, similar to a Gatoron Yellow. And the Ocean Blue switches, which is what I have today. They come in this box which shows the switches, and at the back of the box they talk about their new progressive coil springs, and show a forest graph for the switches, but we'll get into that later. Opening up the box, we see that the switches come in a plastic tray and aren't tightly fit into the tray, which I personally see as a plus. They come out easily, but don't fall out of the tray when tipped upside down, which inspires confidence about the packaging. These striking switches feature a 3 pin configuration with an indigo colored stem and bottom housing and a translucent but blue tinted top housing labeled with the word ACO. The top housing has a small blocker in the middle of the light passage hole which is a bit odd. If you care about RGB, these housings might be a deal breaker since the colors won't be as bright when compared to a standard RGB switch and all of the colors will be slightly mixed together with a bluish tint which you can see when I plug in my GMMK with the startup animation being a white spiral, which is now a baby blue spiral. These ocean blues feature Echo's new progressive coil springs, which they show on their website, and when taking the switches apart, these do have a tighter coil at two different parts of the switch compared to a standard switch spring. These switches don't have very pronounced stem wobble, especially when compared to my gator on yellows. The stem wobble definitely doesn't affect the typing experience, and if you're worried about that, then these switches would work just fine. These switches have 4mm of total travel distance, an actuation force at 45 grams, and a bottom out force at 50 grams. Unlike the previously mentioned linear light tactility of the Gatoron Browns, these are actually tactile and they feature a stronger, more pronounced tactile bump, which occurs about halfway through the key press at 1.9mm, but in usage, I found to have a slight amount of pre-travel before the tactile bump. In terms of smoothness, they're decently smooth, with the post travel being a little scratchy, but that's probably due to spring crunch coming from the progressive springs, but I'll get into that later. All seems well so far, but how do they sound? Now, sound is subjective, but there's definitely some pronounced spring pain coming from these switches, and an almost rattly sound, for me at least. The switch noises are definitely much more noticeable in person and aren't really picked up by the microphone, so I would say that my sound test isn't exactly the most accurate, but it gives a good general idea of the sound signature. These switches are super loud, and are definitely some of the loudest switches that I own. Loop is the holy grail of the keyboard community, and after lubing these switches with G-Loop, they sound deeper and richer in sound obviously. I lube these by first opening the switch up, then getting a small layer of lube on my brush and wiping the excess lube on the lip of the tub. I then brush each side of the slider three times, then I go around the center post and dip my brush inside. I then brush the points where the stem will land to hopefully make the switches a little quieter. Now, I put way too much lube on these springs, 
but that's because of the aforementioned spring ping. So definitely don't put as much lube on your springs as I do, unless you are using this video as a guide to lube your CS switches. In that case, go ahead. I brush one side of the spring, then put it into the bottom housing, lube side down. I then get more lube and lube the insides of the spring. I then get some more lube and put a small puddle on each side of the stem, then I brush the back and front of the stem. With tactile switches, be sure to not lube the legs of the switches, because you risk losing some tactility of the switch. I definitely lube the legs a little with my switches by accident, but I don't really mind that, since these are my personal switches and I'm pretty new to the hobby, so with my oversized brush, I kind of expected to get a little lube on the legs. I then, wipe that, I then wipe down each puddle of lube on the sides of the stem until there's a nice even coating. The stem holder or jewelry claw is super useful and I highly recommend it when lubing switches. I then add a small amount of lube onto the top housing where the stem makes contact and then close the switch. After 3.5 hours of lubing, I finally finished lubing my switches. Here's how they sound now. Let me know if you want to see me make a proper switch lubing tutorial. Keep in mind that these switches use a kale style housing so I needed to buy a kale style switch opener in order to open these, which is why this video took so long to make. I'm not sure if you can film these switches, but judging from the minimal housing wobble I personally wouldn't worry about it. When it comes to the price of these switches, I honestly think that this is one of, if not the best budget switches that you can buy, especially when we're talking about tactile switches, since the only readily available competition as far as I know in terms of price are Gatoron and Otemu Brown switches, with the Ocean Blues being cheaper than the Gatoron Browns and being better in almost every single aspect of being a tactile switch. And whilst I personally haven't tried the Otemu Browns, I don't have high hopes for the switches and probably won't bother with trying them. I absolutely love these switches after lubing them, and praise be to Glorisus, I think that these switches have brought me over to the tactile gang, but I want to try out more tactiles before I officially pledge my allegiance. I'll leave the links to buy these switches in the description if you're wanting to pick them up on Akko's website, but I'll also leave a non-affiliate link to these switches on Amazon, where you might be able to buy them there instead if the switches aren't in stock on Akko's website where the rose red switches are frequently sold out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.